Previously on Harmony and Chaos. The war with Dark Swirl continued as Super Alicorn Shadow tested his new powers against the evil goddess. Shadow with his new powers easily decimated Dark Swirl, and with a mighty barrage, the supercharged hedgehog delivered the fatal blow and put an end to the Chaos Demigod of Nightmares. With Dark Swirl defeated and the evil spell upon our heroes broken, peace had finally been restored to Equestria. Or was it? After Dark Swirl's defeat, the heroes had gathered at Twilight's castle, only to find out that Aeon had absorbed Nightshade's Mark of Perk powers during his fight with Dark Swirl. Upon learning this horrible truth, Princess Celestia opened a portal to Tartarus in an attempt to prevent Aeon from also absorbing Sonya's share of the Triad of Power. However, it was already too late as Lord Tirek confirmed that Aeon had indeed absorbed Sonya's powers. Will our heroes be able to track down Aeon in time to prevent him from completing the Triad of Power and stop him from becoming the God of Power? The search for Aeon begins today on Harmony and Chaos. Episode 91, Gambling on Time. Applejack and Knuckles kissing. I ain't answering it, Nooks. Princess Celestia uses her magic to enter the farmhouse. Well, whoever it is, they can just let themselves into the house. Is anybody home? Sweet sassafras! It's Princess Celestia! Applejack exits her room from upstairs. Uh, top of the morning to you, Princess Celestia. What brings you by? Discord and I sincerely apologize for the intrusion this morning. But a concerning revelation about Aeon's whereabouts has surfaced, and we need Knuckles' expertise. I'm sure he won't mind obliging you, Your Majesty. <sighs> Both Applejack and Knuckles begin walking downstairs to greet Princess Celestia and Discord. Applejack and Knuckles both bow to Princess Celestia. Good morning, Your Majesty. I'm Applejack and I serve you. I know we came up empty using the Master Emerald yesterday in the search for Aeon. But Discord brought up the idea that perhaps Aeon may have used his crystal to open a time portal into the past. And that's why the Master Emerald can't locate him. Is there any way the Master Emerald would be able to detect if any time portals have been opened up over the past 48 hours? I'm not sure. I never used the Master Emerald for that sort of request, but I'll be willing to give it a try. Thank you, Knuckles.
Apple Acres, the Master Emerald Temple. Knuckles walking down the steps to rejoin Princess Celestia, Discord, and Applejack. Was the Master Emerald able to help? Unfortunately not. I'm sorry. But I do believe you're onto something, though, with a theory of Aeon using his crystal to open up a time portal to the past. The question becomes... How far back did he go if he did? I believe given what Aeon is after, I would say he opened a portal five to seven years into the past. Assuming he did open a portal with his crystal, he may also still be here in present day Equestria, and we just can't sense him because of his crystal. Hmm, interesting theories. I've thought along those same lines as well. Aeon no doubt knows of Equestria's history, whether he heard it from sunset or twilight. Traveling back to the past would give Aeon the greatest chance of success of absorbing Prince William's powers, because Twilight was my apprentice and hadn't met the girls yet, and the elements of harmony were turned to stone in redormant. In addition to this, you and the rest of the Mobians were still on Mobius, so essentially, there would be no pony to stop him from achieving his goal of becoming the god of power. We also have reason to believe he went back to the past in an attempt to reunite with Sunset Shimmer. Yes, and in that time period she was far more evil than the Sunset you knew of this time. I mean, it does make sense and all, but how are we gonna know for sure? And even if we wanted to travel to the past to stop Aeon, how would we get there? That's where Knuckles' use of the Master Emerald would come in handy. I know using the Master Emerald to open up time portals has its consequences. But in this case, are the consequences worth the risk in order to stop Aeon? You know more about this being one of the guardians of the Master Emerald, Knuckles. So I value your input here. No, absolutely not. The amount of chaos energy and instability that would be caused by using the Master Emerald to open portals is not worth the risk of stopping Aeon. You're an alicorn, can you use your magic to, I don't know, open a portal to the past? Unfortunately not. Star Swirl's time travel spell is a spell I've yet to master, I'm afraid. But we do know of one pony who's mastered its use, Tia. Are you? Suggesting I ask Star Swirl himself to travel back to stop Aeon? There's no way he would ever use it to tamper with time. No, no, I wasn't talking about him. I was referring to Starlight Glimmer. She has mastered that spell quite well, and almost destroyed Equestria while using it, if you remember. That's right. I forgot that Starlight used that spell to travel to Armobia several years ago. I haven't forgotten about that either, Discord. I'm terribly sorry for bothering you two this morning. And thank you for helping us. Come on, Discord. Let's head back to Canterlot. I need to send Starlight Glimmer a message. Oh, never mind all that, Tia. I'll just teleport over there and tell her you wish to speak with her at Twilight's castle. Meanwhile, Europony. Buckingham Palace, in the middle of the night. Discord appears inside of Prince William and Starlight's private chamber. He notices that Starlight and Prince William are asleep. <laughs> this should do the trick. Discord snaps his fingers and an air horn appears in his hand. <coughs> Guards burst open the door. Discord, what the hell is wrong with you? It's all right, guys. We're not in any danger. But I do agree with Starlight in saying, What the hell is wrong with you, man? I mean, you could have woken us up in a more peaceful manner. <laughs> and take away all this fun. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but I just couldn't resist. Be that as it may, you better have a good reason for coming in and waking us up in this manner. But of course, my liege... I was sent here by Princess Celestia to deliver a message to both you and Starlight, and it's considered urgent slash emergency. 
Hence why I woke you up via air horn. <laughs> Guards exit the room. What's going on? The last I heard, there was a massive fight in Ponyville in a canter lot. Yes, there was, but that battle has since ended, and it's the aftermath that has Princess Celestia requesting Starlight's help. You mean, you guys actually need my help? Uh, in what way am I needed? Yes, I promise we'll explain everything to you once we arrive at Twilight's castle. I would also suggest that Prince William comes along for the ride as well, seeing as all this revolves around him. Me? What exactly have I done? Nothing. This isn't anything like that. It's more about keeping you informed and safe at this point. As far as Starlight goes, we need her expertise on performing Star Swirl's time-traveling spell, since she's the only pony other than the Master himself who can perform it. But using time spells is a serious offense. Not in this case. In fact, it was Celestia's idea for me to come here. If you want to know the whole story, then meet us at Twilight's castle in one hour, both of you. Discord snaps his fingers and teleports back to Sweet Apple Acres. Sounds pretty serious if they're considering using magic to open a time portal. I wonder how I'm included in all of this. Needless to say, I believe we have no choice but to go and hear what Princess Celestia and Discord have to say. And they're clearly including Twilight and Shadow into this conversation, so it has to be something serious. Meanwhile, Discord returns to Sweet Apple Acres. So were you able to talk to Starlight Glimmer? Yes, and I also invited Prince William as well, considering this pretty much revolves around him. They should be meeting us at Twilight's castle in an hour. Alright, let's head over to Twilight's then. Applejack, Knuckles, again, I'm sorry for the intrusion this morning. It's alright, your majesty. I'm s just sorry there isn't anything more AJ and I could do to help. Quite all right, Knuckles. I understand your duties in protecting the integrity of the Master Emerald. Have a splendid day, you two. And thanks again for your help. Princess Celestia and Discord begin walking towards Twilight's castle. Meanwhile... Good morning, Twilight. I'm sorry I slept in a bit. It's all right, Shadow. You deserved it after everything you went through the past couple of days. Tails and Cosmo were filling me in on everything that happened and how her and Green came back to life. It's really a fascinating story and answers many questions about a possible afterlife. And Spike made a delicious breakfast for us. I made sure to save some for you in the fridge. I see. Well, thanks, but I'm not overly hungry at the moment. However, I am curious to know the details of this conversation as well. Come sit with me, and we'll gladly fill you in, Shadow. Twilight moves over in her chair as Shadow gently squeezes himself in while Twilight snugly repositions herself so they can sit comfortably together. Cosmo smiles brightly as she watches Shadow cuddle with Twilight. I must admit, Shadow, your aura has changed greatly since the last time I've seen you. I felt it the moment I came back to this dimension. Yes, well, this place has changed me for the better. Twilight had a lot to do with that as well. You've allowed love to fully enter your heart, Shadow. I'm glad you finally decided to let all the pain and anger you carried with you for so long go. It didn't make sense for me to carry it around any longer. Maria wouldn't want me to. It's great to see you again. So I guess it's true what I heard about Cedrians, that your physical body can be resurrected as long as your seed isn't destroyed? Yes, unfortunately for the rest of my race, they didn't have the chance to give away their seeds before being wiped out by the Metarex like I did. So that explains your resurrection, Cosmo. What's Cream's story? How did she come back to life? After she died here, Cream's soul found us in heaven. My people viewed her as a pure and innocent being, so they bestowed their powers upon her to become an angel once my resurrection was complete. Remember, Cosmo's race was considered to be the guardians of peace for the entire universe. Even though the Metarex destroyed them entirely, their souls 
Considering watching over the universe, they give powers to pure beings like Cream to bring about peace to planets all over the universe. Cream is here because she's Cosmo's personal guardian angel. And she also has her own mission to complete before becoming an angel permanently. I understand. Wow, quite an honor to be in the presence of an angel like Cream. Like I said, fascinating revelations of the afterlife. Well, fortunately, neither you or I will ever have to worry about that. Unless we're killed, of course. Ah, uh, wait. Shadow, you're immortal? Yes, I'm sorry I never told you about that. I was created that way by my creator, Gerald Robotnik. The ultimate life form is what he called me. Created to help those who cannot help themselves. Well, it took you a while to start doing that last part. But with everything you went through, understand why you became cold. I'm just glad you're one of us now, Shadow. I know I haven't always been kind to you guys. Twilight can certainly attest to that. But you guys helped me get past the darkness and made me realize that there was still good beings left to save in the universe. Spike enters the room with Princess Celestia and Discord. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but Princess Celestia and Discord are here to see you. Twilight, Shadow, and Tails quickly get up and bow to Princess Celestia. Oh, I'm sorry. Cosmo bows. It's quite alright, Cosmo. There's no need for you to be so formal. And what do we owe the honor to your visit today, Princess Celestia? Oh, I see. Like I don't even exist. Puh. I'm insulted. I mean, all I did was use my magic to rebuild Ponyville and bring back every pony. I'll stop right there. We're apparently waiting for Starlight and Prince William to also join us as well. Discord and I may have an idea as to where we might find Aeon, but we need Starlight's help, and we just wanted to include you and Shadow in the discussion. I see. Well, I appreciate being kept in the loop, and I'm sure Shadow will help in any way that he can. Please, have a seat. Shadow, do you mind moving that other couch over here from that wall over there? Sure. Shadow uses his new alicorn powers to telekinetically move the couch from the wall next to Twilight's chair. Impressive, Shadow. You've already figured out how to properly use levitation and telekinetic magic with the magic your body permanently absorbed. I've had some help in that regard over the years, seeing Starlight and Twilight use it so fluently. Princess Celestia and Discord sit down, as does Shadow. Can I get you anything, Your Majesty? Perhaps just a cup of tea with sugar for me, Spike, please. I'm good, Spike. Cup of tea with sugar coming right up, Princess Celestia. Oh, and Twilight, have you seen Cream? I really needed to talk to her this morning. I believe she went to Sugar Cube Corner for some donuts and a latte. She should be back in a little bit. Is everything okay, Spike? Yeah, I'm fine. I was hoping to spend some time with her, that's all. Anyway, let me go and grab that tea for you, Princess Celestia. Spike leaves the room. Shadow follows Spike out to the kitchen. Here, I'll give you a hand, Blowtorch. It's okay, I got it, Shadow. Besides, you're needed more in there. That may be true, but you're still a great friend. And I can tell something is on your mind, as it pertains to Kareem. I'm out here to help, or in other words, listen if you need to talk about it. The past several days have been emotional for all of us, in a multitude of ways. I myself had difficulty sleeping last night, just thinking of Aeon being out there, having absorbed two-thirds of the Triad of Power, and not being able to sense him. I never stopped loving her, Shadow, but now I'm with Sweetie Belle. I guess I just have a lot of unresolved feelings about it all, especially now that Cream is back. You know Cream isn't back permanently, Spike. She has a big responsibility now, and she can't achieve her goals until you allow yourself to let her go. Cream is amazing. How do I let her go again? That's a discussion you have to have with her. You certainly had your chance last night, but you had fallen asleep, so Cream didn't want to wake you. I honestly couldn't face her last night, mainly because of what I feel for Sweetie Belle, so I pretended to sleep. I'm not sure where my emotions are at the moment. I don't want either Cream or Sweetie Belle to get hurt. I understand completely with what you're feeling at the moment. It wasn't that long ago I was torn between Starlight and Twilight. 
In the end, my heart made the decision my brain could not. I tried so hard to stay with Starlight, based off the notion that she saved my life on Mobius, and that we had history and were having a baby together, but I knew where and who my heart truly belonged to. The kettle of tea begins to whistle. In the end, fate proved my heart's desire, and I couldn't stay with Starlight out of obligation, or because it was the honorable thing to do. Hmm, not sure how much this conversation helped, but I do appreciate you coming out here to let me vent about it. You're a true friend, Shadow. Offers fist bump to Shadow. <laughs> Thanks for being a bro. Shadow fist bumps Spike. Anytime, Blowtorch. Anytime. Meanwhile, Sugar Cube Corner. Charity and Cream enter the bakery and have a seat in the cafe. So, what do you think of my new and improved boutique, darling? Wonderful! And the extra space suits your needs for the business. Gosh, I remember that cramped out war room we were using. <gasps> oh, speaking of which, that reminds me, dear, that the Grand Galloping Gala is only about a month away. Don't worry, you know I'm gonna help you out as much as I can. It's not that, darling. I was hoping you'd be around for it. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I'm being given to help Spike make peace with my passing. But if I'm still here, I'll definitely go. Amy's shocked to see Cream walks out from behind the counter. Amy embraces Cream tightly. It's so good to see you, Cream. Likewise, Amy. I was in shock when Chris told me that you were back and Cosmo's well. We have some serious catching up to do and the three of us need to have a girl's day. That's wonderful, Amy. I like that a lot. How are you and Chris doing? We're doing great. I really love him and we're pretty happy together. I always knew you and Chris would find a way to be together. Well, unfortunately, I don't have much time to talk. The cakes are still away, so Pinky and I are running the bakery until they return. But yeah, that girl's day with Cosmo needs to happen and soon. Are you staying at Twilight again? Yep. At least while I'm back, I am. I've always liked it there and it still feels like home. Cosmo and Tails are staying there as well. Awesome! I may have to stop by after work tonight, considering Chris won't be home until tomorrow night. He and Manic are going to spend the night in Manhattan. I guess Manic is considering moving there. Oh, you're kidding, darling! But why? He is having some issues dealing with what Pinkie Pie did to him. I still haven't told Pinkie about that yet. She's still hopeful that her and Manic will work things out. Anyway, we're getting busy again. I better get back to work. I'll stop by later so we can chill cream. I'll be sure to tell Cosmo. I'll be back in a few to take your order. ...to take care of her customers at the counter. I can't believe how irrationally Manic and Tails have acted. Do they have no heart? We were all corrupted by evil and had no control over what we were doing. I can understand there being some emotional damage, but for goodness sake, those two are so quick to throw away their relationships. It's simply appalling. They seem to forget we were just as much of the victims as any pony else and need emotional support as well. It is sad what happened, but you don't know the depths of love Tails had for Cosmo back on our world. From what Tails told me, it's not Fluttershy's attack that led him to break up with her, but it's Cosmo being back. It's still not right, darling. Fluttershy genuinely loved Tails with all of her heart and put everything she had into that relationship. It's like the past year and everything those two shared together meant absolutely nothing to Tails. She doesn't deserve that. I do agree with you, and I feel bad for Fluttershy. She really is a sweetheart, but try to put yourself in a tail situation. Being engaged to Cosmo, then watching her give her life to destroy the Metarex just before arriving here. As far as Manic goes, he's been through a lot worse than this. I don't understand why he's considering leaving Ponyville. Perhaps it's none of my business. I'm certainly not one to judge when it comes down to relationships. Celestia knows I've made my fair share of mistakes. But I'm just worried for Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. Me 
Meanwhile, back at Twilight's castle. Prince William and Starlight Glimmer have arrived via teleportation. Starlight, it's wonderful to see you again. It's nice to see you too, despite the late hour in your pony and being so abruptly woken up by Airhorn by Discord. My apologies for the late night call and for Discord not being able to control his urges for ill-timed humor, but there is indeed a serious situation brewing that involves Prince William, more specifically, the Triad of Power. Does this involve the Dark Swirl? No. Shadow put an end to her yesterday morning. The threat is Aeon the Hedgehog. Apparently Nightshade was secretly working with Aeon to break down Dark Squirrel. In order to do so, Nightshade used his magic to restore Aeon's magic crystal from a small fragment that Aeon kept. The plan was that Nightshade was going to absorb the Triad of Power to become the God of Power to bring her down. He needed Aeon's crystal to open a portal to Tartarus to get to Sonya to absorb her powers. Only Aeon betrayed Nightshade while he was fighting Dark Swirl by absorbing his powers during the fight. After Dark Swirl's defeat, we learned of Aeon's plan from Nightshade and Shadow. We tried to get to Sonya before Aeon could, but he had a head start over us with everything that had happened with Dark Swirl and fixing it that... By the time we arrived at Tartarus to check on her, it was already too late. Aeon had already absorbed her powers as well. Aeon has absorbed two-thirds of the triad of power into his crystal. All that's left is Prince William's third of that triad, which brings us to right now. I'm not only giving you this as a warning, but we have a plan to stop Aeon, which includes you, Starlight. I'm not sure if I can help, but I'm willing to do my part, of course. But where's Sunset? Why isn't she trying to stop this? <sighs> Sunset is dead, Starlight. She died protecting me from her mother, Saletta. We would have brought her back with Discord's magic, but her body was completely destroyed in the blast. I'm sorry, Starlight. I know how close you were to her. <laughs> Sunset! She was like a sister to me! She tried so hard to redeem herself after she betrayed us. I was just as shocked as you were right now when she took that blast for me. This plan of Aeon's is revenge for what happened to Sunset. We believe he's used his crystal to open a portal to the past so he can reunite with the Sunset in that time and to absorb Will's portion of the Triad of Power because there would be no one in that time period to stop him. The girls didn't harness the elements of harmony, nor would Sonic or I be there to stop him. Starlight, you're the only pony who's mastered Star Swirl's time traveling spell. We need you to open a portal seven years into the past. We believe that that's the time in which Aeon traveled to. I mean, yeah, I can do that. But what if Aeon didn't travel back through time? And if he did, how do we know if it? like seven years. It's the time frame that best suits Aeon for achieving his goals. All of them. But Starlight can't go through that portal. She can't run the risk of meeting herself. Fine. I'll go. There's no possible way I'd be my past self in Equestria because I was in Mobius with Shadow seven years ago. She's right. It was seven years ago. That's when she saved my life and we fell in love. No, you don't have to go, Starlight. I'll go myself and try to stop Aeon. I just need you to open that portal. I'm going with you, Shadow. You need me to open up the portal back this time. So, I'm in. No, Starlight, I'm not okay with this. I say we let Aeon do whatever he needs in the past, and if he decides to come back to this time, you guys can take him out. It's not that simple, Your Highness. If he absorbs your powers in the past, he will become the god of power. We cannot allow that to happen. In this current timeline, you have us protecting you, but in the past, you're a sitting duck. You weren't even fully aware of your powers seven years ago, which means your past self wouldn't be able to defend himself against Aeon's current power. Like it or not, we need Starlight for this. Look at it this way. 
It's a way for her to protect you. I understand all of that, but what if he didn't travel back in time? What if he's here and just suppressing his powers? You would have sensed him by now if he were in this time dimension. I think it's worth it to look for him in the past. What about protecting Will in this dimension? If I go to the past, who will protect him from Eon? I may have a suggestion as it pertains to that. As we speak, Nightshade is returning to Euro Pony to tie up some loose ends at his castle. And he mentioned stopping by and making peace with you, William. My suggestion is allowing Nightshade to temporarily rule over Euro Pony while you stay here at your home in Ponyville until Aeon is no longer a threat. You would at least have Sonic and the elements of harmony protecting you from a potential attack. Absolutely out of the question. While I do appreciate the offer, I will never trust Nightshade enough to allow him to rule over my kingdom. I'd rather take my chances with Aeon. Very well. You've made your decision. And as far as Starlight goes, she can use her powers to open up a portal to the past, mm. but she's not going with Shadow. Excuse me, Will. You don't control me, so no party controls me. I'm going with Shadow on this mission because I'm still part of this team and he needs me so he doesn't get trapped in the past. I know Aeon, he wouldn't hurt me because he knows Sunset and I were close. My friendship with her alone could put Aeon's plan in jeopardy. I have to do this, Will. It's a way for me to protect you. Personally, I think you should take up Princess Celestia's up for, on her suggestion, but I can't force you to do it. No more than you can stop me from going with Shadow to check the, on the pass. I'm not hiding. I have a kingdom to run. I'm sorry. I tried to control you. That was not my intention. I only worry for your safety, and part of me worries about you and Shadow being together. Really? You don't trust me in that regard? Shadow and I are ancient history. The way our relationship ended made that point crystal clear. Yes, I will always care about him, but I'm not in love with him anymore. Starlight's opinion is exactly the same as what I feel towards her. She saved my life on Mobius in more ways than one. For that reason, I will always care about her as well. And you're completely fine with this, Princess Twilight? Do I look worried? I completely trust Shadow and Starlight going on this mission together. Sure, they have history together, but... I know Shadow loves me, and Starlight loves you, so there really isn't anything to be worried about. Well, I guess it's settled then. Shadow, you better keep her safe. I'm more worried about not being here to protect you from Aeon, but Sonic and the girls have all they need to defeat Aeon should he try anything while I'm gone. Still, I think it would be in your best interest to allow Nightshade to rule over your kingdom while you stay here for safety until Aeon is brought down. But I'm in no position to tell you what to do, Your Majesty. Trust is a big deal to a stallion like me, and I'm sorry, but I will never trust Nightshade. Those feelings are understood. I also don't fully trust Nightshade. However, if there is one positive thing out of all of this, it's that Aeon completely drained him of all his powers, so he's not a threat at the moment. You should probably head out now, Starlight. Aeon already has a head start. Starlight nods. I guess this is goodbye, Will. I love you. I love you too, Starlight. Good luck and stay safe. You know, I'm a pretty powerful pony in my own right, and I have Shadow watching my back, so you don't have to worry about my well-being while I'm gone. You're the one who needs to be careful being alone and having Aeon on the loose trying to absorb your powers. Anyways, are you ready to go, Shadow? It'll take me a minute to do a spell and conjure up enough power to open a portal to the pass. Yes, I'm ready, Starlight. Meanwhile, Nightshade's castle. Nightshade and Princess Luna arrive back at Nightshade's castle in Europony. Nightshade in shock to see the castle cleaned up and with some decorative changes. What an equestrian hell happened to my castle! Hunter makes his entrance. Welcome home, senpai. 
They just told me all about you, and I kind of helped them take care of this place while you're a, uh... Don't you dare say it! <clears throat> a statue? Damn it all! You just had to say it, didn't you? Well, now, I see your company is the Lunar Princess herself. May I say, it's truly an honor to meet you, finally. Oh, um, it's wonderful to meet you as well. Though you're a Mobian hedgehog. Funny, we've never met or had any reference of your existence from the other Mobians that came here a year ago with Chaos Control. Oh, great. The Pony Gods have put yet another rat in my life. Should I trust this one, O oh Princess of the Night? Let the hedgehog speak. I'm intrigued to hear what he has to say. Clearly, he's a friend of Fidget. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Highness. My name is Hunter. I was created by a certain individual who is on his way as we speak. As I said earlier, I've been tending to your castle, Nightshade. I've been, shall we say, fixing the mess your former senpai, ugh, Dark's will caused here. So I take it that I may have slipped through the cracks in your visions, Princess Luna? Yes. Somehow you managed? How did you know, Mr. Fidget? Well, to answer both of your inquisitions, I kind of used my powers of manipulating chaos energy and opened a portal to travel here three years ago. Or at least I think it's been that long. Anyway, I opened a portal to escape from my creator, Dr. Ivo Robotnik, also known to some, mainly my friend Sonic, as Eggman. The portal dropped me here in Europody, and I met Fidget there shortly after. Fidget and I became close friends, and he brought me here, and told me of his history and of the museum, and the castle grounds. After a while, I had found a job in town and moved on with my life, while still keeping in touch with Fidget. I learned a lot about you, Senpai, from him, both while you were gone and after your return. I decided that after his past sad passing, it would be wise to honor him by coming back and take his place. Huh. I see. Well, my track record with your kind isn't going very well, Hunter. Every time I trust a ra- oh! Luna jabs him with her hoof. Hedgehog! I wind up getting stabbed in the back. Although there is one hedgehog I've come to trust, and that would be the noble rat, Shadow. And don't you ever mention that blue filth Sonic's name in my presence again! He and I don't get along, and I may choose one day to settle a score with that rat. As is understandable, given your recent history with him and his sister Sonya. I don't understand why Mr. Fidget kept your existence a secret from me. I was under the impression from him that he had no friends. Unless, of course, you're really working with Aeon, and you've been spying on me. He's also capable of opening up portals with his crystal. How do I know he didn't send you to keep tabs on me and everything you just told us is a lie? Because I absolutely loathe how he did you dirty, Senpai. Plus, I may have an idea about where he went. Unless, of course, you're already aware of it yourself. No, I don't know where that miserable backstabbing hedgehog is. He drained me of all my magical and divine abilities, so I can't sense him at all. We know that he cared a lot about Sunset, right? She was the one thing keeping him from going off the rails. With her gone, he wants to find a moment in time to where he can get her back and on his side this time. Are you suggesting that he used his crystal to go back in time? Precisely. He can't get anything he wants from this point in time. Wills to experience with his magical and divine powers, and popping up now would reveal him to the Master Emerald and Shadow. I wonder if Tia knows of this. Just how long have you been following me around? And if you consider me Senpai, why didn't you intervene when Aeon drained me of my powers? Hmm. Come to think of it, Aeon was rather nervous of the Noble Rat's new powers. Going back in time to absorb William's powers is quite an ingenious move on his part. Ah, that cunning little... Exactly, Senpai. He's going for a port in Equestria's time before the Mobians ever arrived, before you taught Will how to use his powers, 
and before Princess Twilight had any influence over Sunset Shimmer and the Elements of Harmony. Anytime ring a bell, Senpai? That's it! Saddle up! We're flying back to Equestria to tell Princess Twilight and Shadow what we know. Wait, wait, wait. I am not flying over that ocean again. Teleporting this time. Sorry, Shady. But this is much quicker. I wish to come along, Hunter. You know, I think it would be fun. And reuniting with my fellow hedgehogs and being introduced to those as well. So yeah, count me in. On the bright side, your castle is all spick and span again, Senpai. At least I remember that from Mr. Fidget. Out of the shadows after so long. Hopefully that noble hedgehog you speak of doesn't try to kill me. Why would he do that? Our history is more on the rocky side of the friendship spectrum, Senpai. All right. Brace yourself, Hunter. Teleporting us now! Meanwhile, Twilight's Castle. Ah! Look at how much power this takes for me to do the spell! Ah! A portal to Equestria, seven years in the past, has opened. Ugh! The portal is open! Aeon is definitely in the past! I can sense him! Finally! <laughs> Prepare yourself, Aeon! Meanwhile, Princess Luna, Nightshade, and Hunter have arrived via teleportation. Luna? Nightshade? What? Hunter? Uh, how the hell are you here? The last time I saw you, I thought I killed you! Who is that, Shadow? I'll try to explain as best I can, Princess Twilight. For now, we got a more important matter to discuss. You stay the hell away from my princess, Hunter! Why now? Of all the times you could possibly come back to annoy me! I didn't come here for a fight, Shadow. And I certainly didn't come here to harm Princess Twilight. This portal opened forever, and I can only summon enough strength to do it once! Shadow, am I in danger? No, Twilight! Ugh, you're lucky, Hunter, I have a more pressing matter to attend to in the past! But mark my words, I'll deal with you when I return! You can count on it! So you guys already know where to find Aeon? Yes, that's why we've opened up this portal. Shadow has already confirmed to Princess Aeon inside of it. Great minds think alike. We came here to tell you that we thought Aeon was in the past. My new friend here came up with the idea. Shadow! I'm losing it! Don't have time for this! Twilight, you'll be safe. Hunter means you no harm. On that, I promise. Let's go, Starlight. We have a job to do. Shadow and Starlight enter the portal to the past. Portal closes behind them. Hunter watches Shadow disappear into the void and gives a smile. <laughs> Man, Shadow has changed a lot. <laughs> there may still be some help for us after all. Shadow and Starlight have arrived in Ponyville seven years in the past. Damn it! Why the hell is he there? Shadow, you know as well as I do that Hunter isn't a threat to Equestria. Why can't you just let go whatever grudge you have with him go? Because if Hunter is there, that means Eggman is in Equestria as well. Of all the times we had to leave our dimension to come here! Ugh! There's Twilight's castle! You're standing on it, or at least the piece of land of where it'll be eventually. Remember, we're in the past now. Twilight isn't a princess yet, nor does she even live here in Ponyville. None of our friends are going to recognize us, so we are going to have to act like we don't know any pony. We're here for Aeon. Please, clear your head of what happened in our dimension. Ugh, fine. Just give me a minute to calm down and recollect my thoughts. Oh, where do we start? I'm not sensing Aeon at the moment. He must have felt us coming through our time portal, and now he's suppressing his powers again. Well... 
since we're in town, we may as well check up on Will first to make sure he re he's okay and still has his powers. Meanwhile, present day Equestria. Chaotix is eating in a Manhattan diner. This looks so good! I want to eat this! Dessert should be eaten after you've had lunch. Besides, we don't have any money to order anything. Order whatever you want, kid! I'm sure this place will accept gold! Yay! You're the best, Vector! So what's the plan, anyway? Our ship was heavily damaged by that energy blast as we were making our final approach to this planet. We're lucky to be alive right now, honestly. Luck had nothing to do with it, Espio, when you're as skilled of a pilot as I am. If you were a skilled pilot, you would have avoided that energy blast that rocketed off the planet and forced us to crash land. Oh, come on, Espio. I mean, he avoided most of it. And despite the damage to the left side engines, he managed to land us safely. Waitress walks over to take their order. May I start you off with some drinks? I want this double fudge sundae. Hold on, Charmy! Miss, we're new around here and don't have any money. Do you think the owner of this establishment would accept solid gold as payment? Vector sets down four large nuggets of gold on the table. Whoa! That's a bit much, don't you think, boss? Yeah, but I don't know what this planet's gold and currency ratio is. E yeah gold nuggets are acceptable. We'll just weigh the gold pieces out and go from there, sir. In that case, I want three of those double fudge sundaes. I'll have a bacon cheeseburger with the works, the curly fries, and whatever cola you have on tap here. And for you, sir? I'll have your house salad, please. And this water is fine. All right, I'll get your order in right away. Thanks. Yes, thank you kindly, ma'am. Waitress leaves. So what's the plan, Vector? How do we find Sonic and the rest of our friends? Personally, I'm fine if we just set up shop here. Yeah, this city is pretty swanky. But what about reuniting with our friends? That was the reason we came here in the first place. Look, those guys abandoned us after the fight with the Metarex. We weren't transported here with Chaos Control like the rest of them. We were never given a Chaos Emerald. Team Chaotix is on its own, and I think this city is the perfect place to set up shop. I mean, look at this place, SBO. A city this big is bound to need private investigators such as ourselves. We'll make a killing here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a great point, and this city is pretty cool. It's what we're used to on Mobius. Not to mention our ship is damaged, so we really can't go anywhere at the moment. Chris and Manic enter the restaurant. <sighs> here we are, Manic. The best restaurant in Manhattan. Seriously, if you move here, this place will become your favorite place to eat. Thanks again, Chris, for allowing me to tag along with you on your work route. It's cool, Manic. It was nice having someone to talk to today. Otherwise, it would be another boring day of listening to ponies talk about their problems on AM radio. <laughs> so are you really going to go through with moving here to Manhattan? Yeah, I'm considering it. I may ask Sonya to move here with me, too. I think a fresh start for both of us is what we need. You know, running away from your problems isn't going to take the pain away, Manic. I really think you should think twice before moving away from Ponyville. I can't stay in Ponyville, Chris. I don't want to be around Pinkie Pie anymore. Ah, Mr. Thorndike. Dining with a friend today, are you? Yeah, I am. We have your normal booth ready for you as well. Wow, they know you by name and even have a personal booth waiting for you here. They begin walking to their table. Like I said, I come here often. They pass Chaotix table. Like I was saying, SBO. Vector stops and stares at Chris as he walks by and notices Manic. Vector, was that? I think it was, but what would he be doing here? I thought he lived on Earth. And who was that hedgehog he was with? I don't know, but maybe we should go and say hi to an old friend. Chris and Manic take their seat at the booth. Well, what about Sonic? Won't you miss him? Sonic runs past the speed of sound. If he ever wanted to visit me here, he could do it with no problem. I just want to be as far away from Pinky as I can be. In Pinky's defense, she had no control over what she did. Don't you think you're being a little harsh on her? You don't understand, Chris. You didn't know me until you came here. I was a wild, crazy rock star who lived every bit of that lifestyle until I met Pinkie Pie. She was the first girl I ever gave my heart to. 
In all honesty, she was the only girl I met who was worth giving it to. I, I know it was evil magic or whatever that made her attack me, but all I see is her stabbing me with that knife. I can't just erase it like it didn't happen, bro. Chaotix walks up to Chris at Manic's table. We're a long way away from Earth there, Chris! <gasps> Chaotix! Man, it's been a decade since I saw you guys last. How you guys been? You know these guys, Chris? Yeah, they came to my world back when Chaos Control sent them there. Huh. Name's Manic. Nice to meet you guys. Likewise, I'm Vector, and this is Espio and Charmy. We're known as Chaotix. Oh, I heard about you guys. You guys are those private investigator dudes. Yep, that's us. See, I told you those ads helped, SBO, and you thought it was a waste of money. So how did you wind up here, Chris? I came here about 10 months ago. I kind of missed my friends from Mobius, so I created a machine that could tap into the Chaos Emerald's energy to create Chaos Control, and poof, the rest is history. Wow, that's incredible that you were able to do that. You must be insanely intelligent. That's or your father helped you. Nope. I did it on my own, actually, and in secrecy. My parents must be worried sick about me. So what about you guys? How have you guys been doing here the past year? Oh, we just crash landed here yesterday. Yeah, we weren't in possession of a chaos armor when everyone else came here, so we traveled here the hard way. And you said you crash landed? Yes, we were making our final approach to this planet when our ship was hit by a massive energy wave that shot off the planet's surface. You guys must have been hit by Shadow's energy blast. We were kind of in a battle with Dark Swirl. Yikes! Not Dark Swirl! As in the Chaos Demigod of Nightmares. Yeah, that was her alright. And you guys survived to tell about it? Yeah, it was Shadow who defeated her and saved Equestria. Oh man! Just how powerful has Shadow become since our fight with the Metarex? To take down a Chaos Demigod takes some serious power. Vector, our food is ready. Go ahead, you two, and go eat. I'll be over there in a second. Why don't you guys go ahead and grab your food, and I'll tell your waiter the bill is on me. Really? Yeah, I can cover it, and it's the least I could do considering you guys just arrived yesterday. Alright, we'll go over and grab our food and be right back. Thanks, Chris. We owe you one. Don't mention it. I know what it's like to be new around here and not have any money. Chaotix leaves to go and get their food and to talk to their waiter. So those guys are Chaotix, huh? You mean you never heard of them until now? No, but I heard about them from Sonic after we arrived here. Chaotix returns with their food and joins Chris and Manic for lunch. So where did you guys crash land? Just outside of town. Our entire left side is completely fried. We lost all four engines. Had we lost the wings, we wouldn't have survived the landing. Yeah, I can only imagine. That's some pretty impressive piloting to move a ship of your size out of Shadow's blast path and only have engine damage. See, Espio? Chris recognizes good piloting when he hears about it. Espio face palms and shakes his head. Well, maybe after lunch I can head over to your ship and take a look at it. I may be able to get it up and running again for you guys. Since when have you had that type of knowledge? I built these types of aircraft for my dad's company. Yeah, Thorndike Industries was the main reason I left my world, aside from wanting to reunite with Sonic and the rest of you guys. Speaking of Sonic, Manic is Sonic's twin brother. Oh wow, yeah, I can totally see the resemblance. Wait, 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 wait. You're the rock star, aren't you? Yeah, that's me, kid. Oh man, I thought I recognized you. I've been a huge fan and have been to a ton of your shows back on Mobius. I never guessed you were the manic that Sonic referenced. Well, I'm part of a band here in Equestria too. If you like my stuff back home, just wait to hear what the DJ Pwn 3 band can do, bro. Manic and Vector begin fanboying over one another. Meanwhile, Chris, Espio, and Charmy continue talking. Do you really think you can fix our ship, Chris? I won't know until I look at it. Hopefully I'll only need Tails' help at the worst. But if the ship needs massive repairs, then it may be done for because Equestria doesn't have the technological capabilities that you're used to. Sadly, after looking at the ship myself, I think we may fall into the latter category, Chris. Meanwhile... Seven years in the past. Ponyville. 
Shadow and Starlight arrive at Prince William's house. Shadow and Starlight walk up the steps to the front door. Remember, Shadow, let me do all the talking. Why? Scared I may say something offensive or embarrassing? No, of course not. It's just, you have a way of coming off intimidating. Starlight looks through the window. Hmm, he doesn't appear to be home. I wonder. Derpy pulling her cart of muffins for her delivery. Oh, Mr. Atkinson is away on a tour. Starlight turns around and sees Derpy. Um, Derpy, do you know where he is? Oh, are you one of them psychic ponies? How did you know my name? Can you tell my future? Hmm, <laughs> and you were worried about me screwing this up. Starlight gives Shadow a look. Oh no, it's, it's nothing like that. I mean, every pony in Equestria has heard about Derpy's famous muffins. Mmm. My friend Will is a regular customer of yours as well, so I've had my fair share of your muffins while visiting him. I'm Starlight Glimmer. It's a pleasure to meet you, Starlight. Well, Mr. Atkinson has canceled his usual muffin delivery for the next several months because he's on his tour. I think it's a play or something like that. He's so talented, isn't he? Do you know where he went exactly? It's kind of an urgent matter that we see him immediately. Nope. All I know is that he'll get back in touch with me when he comes back to town. Would you two like to try one of my newest flavor of muffins? Oh, yes. I would love to try your new muffin. Um. <laughs> This is really delicious, Derpy. What flavor is this? It's peanut butter chocolate. I'm glad you like it. Does your friend want to try some? Oh, come on! We don't have time for this, Starlight! Shadow, I highly recommend that you try one of Derpy's muffins. No! I hate muffins, Starlight! I don't even eat Pinky's muffins! You don't like muffins? What do you mean you don't like muffins? Uh. Shadow, watch what you're saying. Oh no, too late. <laughs> well, it's a known fact that my muffins are better than Pinky Pies. Uh, Starlight, please help me. Don't worry, Shadow. <laughs> I've got your back. Uses magic to shove muffins into Shadow's mouth. <coughs> See, Derpy? Shadow loves your muffins. Isn't that right, Shadow? I'm gonna kill you. Yes, yes, I love the muffins. They are wonderful. <laughs> D delicious, in fact. Mmm, so much better than Pinkie Pie's. Well, okay. <sighs> yeah, my friend is quite the stubborn hedgehog. Sometimes he forgets his manners. I think he got the message, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never insult my muffins again. Anyways, I have deliveries to finish. It was nice meeting you, Starlight. And... Shadow. <clears throat> the name is Shadow. Feel free to order muffins from me anytime. Bye. Derpy connects back to her cart of muffins and begins walking away. Sorry I had to do that, Shadow. But it's a well-known fact to never insult Derpy's muffins. Although, I will admit, cramming dolls into your mouth was a bit of a sweet revenge for leaving me and falling in love with Twilight. So that's what that was about. I will never look at muffins the same. So where do we go from here? Well, 
chances are that Aeon came here to look for Will first. I wonder if Will's password to unlock the door in the security system is the same as it is in our timeline. Guess we're about to find out. Are you suggesting we break and enter into Will's house? I wouldn't really consider it breaking and entering if I technically live here too. Besides, Aeon could be inside. I mean, he and Sunset were living in Will's house after we moved to Buckingham's palace in our time. Starlight uses her magic to type in the security code. The code is correct as the alarm disarms and the front door unlocks. Starlight and Shadow enter the house. Well, everything looks in order. Hard to tell if Aeon was here already or not. Regardless, I think this is a great place for us to stay while we're here. Personally, I'd rather find my princess, Starlight. Remember, Shadow, she won't know who you are. If we should run into her, it would be best if we just avoid her. Honestly, there's going to be a strong possibility of that scenario happening considering our next move is to go to Canterlot. Great idea! In the meantime, we should try to find a clue as to where Will could possibly be with this door. Maybe if Aeon hasn't been here yet, it will give us a head start to get to him before he does. I'll go check his office. I know he usually keeps a planner in there. And I'll go check to make sure Aeon isn't here. They split up to do their tasks. Starlight inside of Will's office. She finds Will's planner on his desk. She uses her magic to tear a sheet of paper from his notepad and dips a quill in ink. Starlight begins writing down all of Will's tour date stops. After some time has elapsed, Shadow rejoins her in the office. The coast is clear here. I take it you found something? Yeah, Will had his entire tour marked down here. If the Muffin Day are the same as in our timeline... Then he should be in Van Hoover for the next four days. Then Van Hoover should be our first move, Starlight. It's imperative we get to him before Aeon does. Agreed, but how are we going to approach him? It's not like I could just be like, Hey sweetie, I'm your girlfriend, seven years from the future. Come with us, you're in danger. We'll come up with something on the way. Ugh. Come on, hop on my back and we'll fly there. Are you sure? That's a long way to carry me on your back, and not to mention the sus level of me being on your back. There's nothing sus about it. I understand that, yes, we indeed have a past romance together, but we're on a mission, and we don't have the time to take a train out there. Me carrying you will be much faster, and we are trying to keep a low profile here. Being on a public train is anything but that. It's over a thousand mile flight to carry me through. I can handle it. We'll have to stop overnight for rest and have dinner and whatnot, but I do have a place in mind. Really? Where? Hoofsdale Valley, Rainbow Dash's childhood home. If I'm not mistaken, the property should be vacant during this time. You're right. It should be. Okay then. I guess we have everything we need. Let's head out. Shadow and Starlight exit Will's house. Before leaving, Starlight resets the lock and alarm system with her magic. She hops onto Shadow's back as they take off for Hoofsdale Valley. Meanwhile, present day Ponyville, Twilight's Castle. Seriously, Sonic, this sucks being cooped up here. <laughs> it could be worse though. Luckily, Twilight is allowing you to stay here after what you pulled the last time. I mean, would you rather be riding in a cell in Tartarus? Of course not, but really, it doesn't make any sense for me to be on castle arrest when I don't have any powers to cause harm anyway. So if you had your powers, you'd still be causing trouble? Ugh, no. Running away in a hell known as Tartarus has allowed me to have a change of heart. I screwed up bad, Sonic, and I honestly would like to try and live a normal life here this time around and try to reconnect with you and Manic. That would be ideal, sis. What changed you so much over the years? When we were kids, you did everything you could do to help us bring down Eggman. Not once did you ever use your powers for evil. Being held prisoner for most of my life is what changed me, Sonic. 
15 years of being Aeon's pawn has a way of hardening a girl, you know? Honestly, I can't judge you given what happened to me recently with falling under Dark Swirl's control. I just want to see you happy, sis. But I've missed you these past 15 years. I've missed you too, Sonic. I'm sorry for making a mess of things the first time around. I promise, this time, I'm going to do it right. Well, I hope that one day you get your powers back. It would be nice to have you fighting for good at my side again. We may need you more than you realize. <laughs> uh, our childhood of fighting Eggman. Do you think they'll ever forgive me? Especially Rainbow Dash? I'm pretty sure they will. It'll just take time, and you honestly showing that you want to change. As far as Dashy goes, one of her big things is loyalty. When you betray her, it takes a long time for her to build up her trust again, especially with Rainbow Dash. Actions speak louder than words. A mere apology isn't going to be enough for her to forgive you. Tails and Cosmo enter the room. Oh, hey, Sonic. When did you get here? Probably ten minutes ago. How you doing, bud? I'd ask how things went with Fluttershy, but it's been pretty apparent how that went. <sighs> yeah, I feel bad about breaking her heart, but what am I supposed to do? Cosmo came back and saved my life. You know her attacking you wasn't her fault? That's not why I left her, Sonic. I mean, yeah, it did play a role in the end, but had Cosmo not come back, I'd probably be dead to be honest. You know as well as I do, had Cosmo not died before we came here, Fluttershy and I would have never happened to begin with. Yes, but you still fell in love with her. I think it's only fair that you at least make things right. I tried that, Cosmo, but she didn't want to hear it and flew away. Amy walks into the castle. Oh my gosh, Cosmo! Amy rushes to her and embraces her. Hi, Amy. You look good. Thank you. I saw Cream earlier and she told me that you were back. And what can I say? I guess I just wanted to catch up with you. Chris is staying in Manhattan tonight, so I'm home alone and I didn't want to be bored. Bored? More like lonely. Excuse me. Prison bit. I dare you to finish that sentence. Oh boy, here we go with you two again. Seriously, nothing ever changes between the two of you. Well, it's true, Sonic. All she ever cared about was herself, and having someone to dote all over her. For your information, the reason Chris isn't coming home tonight is because he took Manic along with him to Manhattan, so Manic could look at apartments there. Manic is pretty dead set on moving there. You're kidding me, right? Why is he doing that? He doesn't want to stay in Ponyville any more than given the memories he has with Pinkie Pie here. He can't even face her after what she did to him. Yeah, but it wasn't Pinky's fault. I can't believe he's willing to throw the best thing that ever happened to him away. I agree with you, but right now he can't be anywhere near her. Which brings me to the reason I came by today. Could I talk to you two in private? Amy looking at Cosmo and Tails. Sure. Absolutely. Amy, Tails, and Cosmo leave the room and go to Twilight's library. So, are you guys planning on staying here at the castle permanently? I don't know. To be honest, I haven't really thought about that yet. Why do you ask, Amy? Chris and I originally got this apartment before we became a couple, so naturally we got a place with two bedrooms. Needless to say, we aren't using his bedroom at the moment, so we do have a place where you and Cosmo can stay, and as far as rent goes, you won't need to worry about that, because Chris and I have that covered. That's a very generous offer, Amy, but I'm more inclined to stay here at Twilight's castle. I feel like there's more here for me to do. Twilight has a workshop, or a lab, so to speak, so I have a space where I can tinker with things if need be. If Cosmo and I move in with you and Chris, it'll be kind of crowded, and there's no place for me to work on my projects. I see. Well, I just thought I'd put it out there. I mean, the two of you are such good friends of mine, and I thought it would be cool to have Cosmo as a roommate. We don't have to be roommates to have a great friendship, Amy. I just came back to the living realm a few days ago. There's still so much that Tails and I need to figure out. And I do agree with him that this castle is a better fit for us. I do appreciate the gesture though, Amy. 
Well, I offered. Meanwhile, just outside Manhattan city limits. Chris taking a look at Chaotic's spaceship. Wow, Vector, I have to admit, I'm in awe that you were able to land the ship safely. It had to take impeccable piloting skills to do so. The hard part was keeping it steady as we were coming in hot. I tried to keep us up on the left side as much as possible. On top of the engines being completely gone, the landing gear has taken in major damage as well. I can repair the engines by simply taking two of the four engines off the right side and reworking all the necessary lines. That will re-establish a stable flight while in air, but the landing gear I'm not so sure can be fixed, mainly because the materials needed to repair it aren't found here in Equestria. What, they don't have motorized vehicles or airships on the planet, Chris? <laughs> nope, afraid not, Vector. Our two ships are one of a kinds here, and there's also the issue of no fuel on this planet as well. So you'd also have to have a solar power system installed, and doing that will no doubt take a substantial amount of time to put in. Wow, Chris, you got really smart over the years. Yeah, I kind of followed in my dad's and Gramps' footsteps and got into this stuff. Honestly, I got into it a little too much as it became my entire life. Aside from missing all you guys, that was probably the biggest reason I came here. I lost my passion for engineering. So, what do you think, Chris? Can the ship be salvaged? If you're asking me, do I think it'll be able to fly again? Yes. However, the issue is going to be the landing gear and converting the systems to run on solar power. And right now, I just don't have the time necessary to fix this up quickly. I don't know. Maybe if I bring in Tails to take a look at it, he'd be able to figure something out. So where's everyone else at, Chris? I heard you mention talking to Tails and whatnot. With the exception of Rouge, everyone from Mobius is in a town called Ponyville. What happened to Rouge? She's completely fine, Espio. She serves as a Wonderbolt and is in love with one of her teammates, so she lives away from the rest of us. We do see her from time to time when she's granted military leave. Oh, that's good to hear. I'm happy for her. Yeah, who would have thought Rouge would find love? So, Chris, what's Ponyville like? It's very beautiful. It's peaceful. Not so much quiet with the residents there, but I've made a ton of new friends and have a pretty good life with Amy right now. Yeah, Chris is hitting it. Chaotic's jaws drop and they fall over in shock. Ah, you and Amy Rose! Tell me about it. I thought her and Sonic. <laughs> nope. Afraid not, guys. Sonic fell in love with a pony named Rainbow Dash. Sonic is actually married to her. Maybe you guys should come with us back to Ponyville. This way you guys can catch up. Yeah, it sounds like we should do that, Chris. But what about our ship? We can't just leave it here unprotected. Oh, right. I forgot about that. And besides, there's five of us and the X-Tornado only seats four. That's okay, Chris. Chaotix can take my seat. Are you sure? How will you get back to Ponyville? I'll take a train back. I want to stay in town a few more days so I can look at some more apartments. Maybe explore the city a little bit more. I could totally stay in your house and watch your spaceship for you guys. I've got a few days before I need to be back in Ponyville for rehearsals. Well, I guess that would be okay. Yeah, it would be nice to at least meet up with everyone again. Well, okay then. We'll leave in the morning, guys. Meanwhile, Prince William's house, Ponyville. Prince William is walking around his old house. He's eternally reminiscing on his time there. He stops inside the doorway to his writing office and has a flashback of himself writing a masterpiece play. <sighs> Prince Williams walks over to the front door. He opens it and is in shock to see Nightshade and Hunter standing there. What do you want and how did you know where I was here? When you didn't teleport leaving Twilight's castle, I had Hunter find you by sensing your power. As to why I'm here, I came here to talk and perhaps bury the hatchet between you and I. Prince William has a reluctant look on his face as he invites them in. You know you're taking quite the gamble by coming here, William. Where I go is not your concern, ancestor. Or should I just call you uncle? I do not fear Aeon. In a way, I have you to thank for that. So you want to bury the hatchet with me, do you? Well, let's start with a little bit of honesty, shall we? 
Why did you teach me how to use my powers? Was it legitimately out of kindness or did you do it so I would let my guard down around you? I can see I taught you well. There's no fooling your keen intellect, is there? Very well, yes. I had every intention of absorbing your powers. My teaching you was a way to buy time to getting every pony to believe, including you, that I could be trusted. Once every pony's guard was down, that's when I planned on making my move. Prince William smugly nods. I knew it. And now that you're the one with no powers, you come here to gravel at my hooves for forgiveness. You can take your peace offering and shove it, Uncle Nightshade. I understand why you feel this way towards me, but I can assure you that if and when I get my powers back, you'll have nothing to fear from me. In light of recent circumstances, I've had a change of heart. You know damn well as I do, you're not safe at the moment. Thinking you're a match for Aeon is foolish, and you need to take the threat of him seriously. I saw the look on your face when Starlight opened that portal to the past, and his power was sensed. It makes no difference. He's in the past. I'm here in the present. He can't hurt me, and I have a kingdom to rule over. <laughs> then why are you here, and not over in your pony? Admit it. You fear Aeon so much that you don't want to be left alone unprotected over there. So you've chosen to stay close to the heroes that protect this planet. Am I right, or am I wrong? Yes, I do fear him. At any moment, he can come back to this timeline and absorb my powers. And yet, I have a kingdom I need to return to. You know, it's funny, actually. Shadow had mentioned to me before you arrived earlier at Twilight's castle that I should consider allowing you to rule over your pony in my stead as I take exile here in Ponyville until Aeon is apprehended. The noble rat suggested this. Well, it is a wonderful idea if you think about it. It is indeed, but how can I trust you after you told me what you were intended to do to me? The reason this is a great idea is because the ponies of your pony wanted me to become their ruler prior to Celestia giving it to you. They are confident in my abilities to rule over them, and they trust me. I can assure you that when the time comes for me to relinquish rule back over to you, I will do so without any conflict. I will also promise to temporarily rule by your guidelines and not my own. Consider this my revenge upon Aeon. By ruling in your stead, I'm making it more difficult for him to obtain your powers if he decides to come back here. Let me be frank with you about two things, Nightshade. Number one, I absolutely do not fear Aeon. However, I know I'm no match for him, standing alone and unguarded. And number two, I don't trust you, but in this instance, I need to do what's best for myself and for the best interest of your pony. Giving you temporary rule of my kingdom ensures both of these, but Nightshade, I promise you, if you so much as try anything to overthrow or deny me my rightful rule when this is over, I will end you. There's no need for the hostile tone, boy. I have no desire staying in your pony once this matter concludes. Let's just say I have my reasons for wanting to make Ponyville my new home, and I consider my future to be here. Very well, Nightshade. I will return to your pony at once, and let my subjects know of what's going on, and of this temporary change. Once you arrive at my palace, we'll make our temporary exchange of power official. I'll see you soon. Prince William teleports back to Buckingham Palace in your pony. Congratulations on an ornamaster nightshade. Hardly, Hunter. I fully intend on this being temporary. My place is here. Would a certain princess be the reasoning behind this, senpai? Perhaps. I have a certain offer I will make to Prince William when the time is right. It's more of a trade, really. I can't go back to that castle, Hunter. I can't go back there knowing what happened to Fidget. If you plan on staying with me, then I guess you'll have to make peace with moving from your pony. I completely understand how you feel, Mr. Nightshade. Fidget was my dear friend as well, and you're right. That castle doesn't feel the same without him. I'm with you 100%, Senpai. You remind me so much of him, Hunter. Alright, we have a long flight ahead of us, so hop on my 
back. We'll make a pit stop to stay overnight. Walter hops on Nightshade's back as they exit Will's house and fly off. Twilight's Castle. Early evening. Spike's bedroom. Spike is lying in bed reading a comic book. Cream knocks on his door and enters. Hi, Spike. I am sorry I was gone most of the day today. I know you've been wanting to see me. It's okay, Cream. I know you wanted to catch up with some of your friends. It's not that, Spike. The truth is, I've been dreading this moment. This moment where you and I would be alone. Spike climbs down from his bed and goes to Cream and embraces her. Why would you ever dread being alone with me? Because I'm in love with you. And I can't express that to you anymore. I dread this moment, Spike. Because all I want to do is hold you and express my love for you like I did before I died. Before I became an angel. I guess I should be grateful, though. Becoming an angel has allowed me to return to the living world. You know the truth of the matter is, Spike. That I lied to you when I said an angel can't be in love. Why would you lie to me about something like that? I figured it would make it easier on both of us. I mean... You're in love with Sweetie Belle, and I wasn't lying about the part about me only being here temporarily. Cosmo's race was responsible for upholding peace in the universe, and with their race being wiped from existence, they rely on beings like myself to become angels and be the overseers of peace in their stead. Spike, I want you to experience love, and given what my angelic responsibilities are, I could go years without seeing you. That's not the kind of love you deserve. So, in a way, I am forbidden to love. I've been watching you from up there, and I've seen how special you and Sweetie Belle are together, and it's made me happy that she was able to mend your broken heart. But there is one thing we need to fix about us, Spike. And what's that? You have to let me go. I can't do that, Cream! There's not a day that's gone by that I haven't thought about you or the love I feel inside my heart for you. And I love you all the same, Spike. But this anger you feel inside you over what happened to me is going to destroy you one day. I was able to save you this time, but I may not be able to do it again. I'm alright. More importantly, I'm happy with how things have turned out. So please don't carry any more anger or guilt for my death. Well... You're back now. You don't think having you back is difficult? All I want to do is hold you and love you the way I did before your death. Cream kisses Spike's cheek. You don't think I want that too? But times have changed, Spike. You have something amazing with Sweetie Belle. As an angel, I can't interfere with that. That's the part that's forbidden. I can't interfere with what's happened naturally. Could you honestly break Sweetie Belle's heart? No, I couldn't. She's been wonderful, and I am in love with her. Honestly, if not for her, I don't think I'd be doing as well as I am now. Don't say things like that. You are here, and you've allowed yourself to heal enough to fall in love with Sweetie Belle. I'm truly happy for you both, and you absolutely have my blessing. It's time you move on with your life, Spike. As much as I appreciate that, Cream, it's still hard, you know? It will get easier on you, I promise. When I'm gone again, you'll understand why things have to be this way. Just know that I'm alright. And most importantly, I'm happy. Well, I know you've spent most of the day in town, but do you maybe want to go grab an ice cream cone with me? You know, for old time's sake? Muffins from me anytime. Bye. Yeah, Cream? I will always love you. And I'll always be around if you need me. Meanwhile, seven years in the past. Rainbow Dash's house in Hoofsdale Valley. Shadow and Starlight sitting in front of a bonfire. You know, I've never been up here before. 
Rainbow Dash always spoke very highly of this place. Hmm. Yes, she has lots of great childhood memories of this place. I can see why she loves it up here. This place does have a way of clearing your mind. Uh, what's on your mind, Shadow? You know, back there at Twilight's Castle this morning, I almost didn't want to go through the portal with you. It's nothing having to have to do with you, but... It's Hunter, isn't it? Yeah, seeing him makes me wonder if Eggman may be here. I don't think so, Shadow. I mean, he already left Eggman's side when I met him. When you and Hunter last fought, you were the one working for Eggman. Much like Sonic and I, Hunter and I don't have a friendly past. And in many cases, my relationship with Hunter is worse. I don't think either one of us wanted it to be that way. But Hunter was created to be the better version of me. A more obedient and efficient killing machine than I was. But in your defense, you weren't created to destroy life. I don't know, maybe Hunter developed his own conscience somehow. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Didn't all of you create a pact once you arrived here to leave your Mobian grudges on Mobius? Yes, but I don't remember Hunter being a part of that agreement. Well, you've both changed over the years. I think it's time for the two of you to start over. I mean, who knows? He could become quite a powerful ally. Maybe. You know, Shadow, I've been thinking a lot about us since we arrived here in this timeline. You do remember where we were in this period of time? I do remember, and I suggest we halt this conversation immediately. You can't tell me you haven't thought about it. Of course I've thought about it. The question is, why are you bringing it up? There's no reason in particular other than the fact that we're seven years in the past. The me in this time used her magic to travel to Mobius because of the vivid dream she was having about it and about you. Clearly, we're seven years in the past, which would mean I had already saved your life and we were falling in love. <sighs> I'm sorry, Starlight. No, um, there's nothing to be sorry for. Do you ever wonder, though, what if Eggman had never kidnapped me? Do you think the us of this time would forever be together if I wasn't forced to use my magic to return to Equestria? I don't know how to answer that question. I guess if I had to give one, though, I would think that, yes, we probably would have lasted forever. But that's not how history would play out. You know it was never my intention to hurt you or to break your heart. I tried so hard to stay with you despite falling for Twilight. I'm sorry, Shadow. I know I shouldn't be bringing this up, but I'm not happy with my relationship with Will. He's changed so much since becoming the ruler of Europony that he's not the stallion I fell in love with. And I feel like my place with you guys is in Ponyville. I'm not ready or cut off a royalty. Does he know you feel this way? I don't think so. I mean, he knows I'm not happy. I haven't told him about the part where I'm falling out of love with him. I now know what you must have went through. You stayed in a relationship with me out of obligation. Yes, and it was the biggest mistake of my life. I should have been honest with you the moment I started falling for Twilight. But I chose not to. The fact that you and I were having a baby together was the real reason I chose to stay with you out of obligation. Wow. I guess Chrysalis did us a favor in a way, huh? No, she didn't. We still lost our baby because of her. Take it from me, Starlight. It's best if you tell Will how you feel now. Don't stay in a relationship out of obligation like I did, because when the truth does come out, it'll be a lot more hurtful. I suppose you're right. You know, for what it's worth, Shadow, I never stopped truly loving you. But I know you don't share the same feelings for me, even though, deep down, I know you still love and care for me as a friend. You saved my life, Starlight, and you're a dear friend. I will always love and care about you, and you know I'll always have your back. That's good to know, Shadow. We should probably douse this fire and head inside to get some sleep. We got a busy day making sure to get to Will before Aeon does. Meanwhile, still seven years in the past. Canterlot. Sunset appears to be home. 
Uh, here goes nothing. Sunset Shimmer of the Past opens the door. Hello, Sunset. Who are you? My mother sent you to kill me, didn't she? I promise you, Sunset, I'm not here to kill you. However, your mother, Saletta, is the reason for me being here. Let me in and I'll explain everything. Don't worry, you know I'm gonna help out as much as I can. It's not that, darling. I was hoping you'd be around for it. I'm not sure how much time I'll... I'm... Be <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to see you, Cream. Likewise, Amy. I was in shock when Chris told me that you were back in your... Motherfuckers. <laughs> Already. Well, unfortunately, I don't have much time to talk. The cakes are still away with Pinky, so... And, and as far as Starlight goes, she can use her powers to open up a portal to the past, but she's not going with Shadow. Excuse me, Will. You don't control me. Nobody controls me. Wait, oh my god. Nobody? I said <laughs> that? Oh my god! Blubber! Blubber real! There's Twilight's castle! You're steaming on it, or at least the piece of land of where it'll be eventually. Remember, we're in the past now, Twilight. I mean, oh huh? my god. <laughs> oh, I messed up on this one. Uh -huh. And I love you all the same, Spike. But this anger you feel inside of you, over... Oh, I hesitated. God fucking damn it. I guess I should be grateful, though. Becoming an angel has allowed me to return to the living world. You know the truth of the matter is, Spike, that I lied to you when I ain't a and a ba but the ba a da da da. Bird is a word. Ba ba ba. It's a pleasure to meet you, Starlight. Well, Mr. Atkinson has also a mother Rickers. Oh fuck no. Yeah. Oh wait, fuck, I forgot the giggle. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at this. <laughs> Paimon's gonna be sniping some bitches again. I will always love you. And I'll always be around it. Right. I forgot I had a pretzel in my mouth. And what do we owe the honor for your visit? Oh god. I can't believe I screwed that up. I can't read today. <laughs> oh man, that was a terrible... Uh, I swear, Sonic, my voice is gone. I've had some help in that regard over the years. Seeing Starlight and Twilight use it so... Oh god, why did I fuck that line up? I don't know, Shadow. You, uh, you're having an issue reading today. I know, thanks for sharing. And I'll go check to make sure Aeon isn't here. They split up... They split... Uh. Up, oh, Mike fucked up. Yes, you did. You're constantly fucking up. It also doesn't help that you were at a wrestling event last night and you you lost your voice. 
<laughs> yes, and I also invited Prince William as well. Considering this pretty much revolves around him, and I fucked that line up, because I'm a moron. No, absolutely not. The amount of chaos Impressive, Shadow. You've already figured out how to properly use loop. Uh oh my goodness. <laughs> Where did that come from? I'm sorry, not lubrication, levitation. Holy shit.